Good morning. morning. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Welcome to this first Sunday of Christmas as we continue to celebrate God's presence among us as we continue to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. Blessings to you. You'll note in our service today that um, instead of any typical uh, liturgical song responses, um, there is Christmas music straight through. Um, just making note of that in the bleak midwinter verse, I know that uh, uh, we are an offering is very special to this congregation, but don't worry, it's just gone for a week, okay? So just want to assuage any worries there. We are gathered together this morning to worship. And so I invite you into a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with Joy to the World. We are gathered to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sanctifier. Amen. Please join me in our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who sends the word with angels and who made flesh among peoples, who breathes peace on all the earth. In Christ we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Wrap our hearts up in your peace that That all we do, in word or deed, may reflect reflect your love born among among us. us. Amen. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us, in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. It is not bolded, but you can read this with me. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to the good we will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Second chapter. Having dedicated her, her son Samuel to God's service, Hannah visits him every year when she and her husband Elkanon had come to the temple to offer sacrifices. God grants Hannah more children, and Samuel himself gains favor in the sight of all. Samuel was ministering before the Lord a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Here ends the reading. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Sing praise, all hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. 
Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters of heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. Who made the stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous winds doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Among men and leaders, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has risen up strength for the people and praise for all faithful sins. The children have a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. reading is from the third chapter of Colossians. Just as newly baptized Christians in the early church were clothed with new garments upon arising from the baptismal waters, so all who have received God's gift of life in Jesus Christ are covered with the character of Christ. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here ends the reading. Praise to you. You may stand. We're Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and glory. Is born 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus grew up in a family. They went to the Passover festival each year. It was in this environment of faithful adherence to the law that Jesus grew into spiritual maturity and an understanding of, of his identity and mission. Now every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the kids to come forward at this time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I just gave you a present. The best present she's ever had. Sorry, Santa and Grandma and Mom and Dad. Okay. There might have been just a tad of sarcasm there. Are, 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 you, are you 12? 11. 11. So you're 11 going on 12. Yeah. Well, in our readings today, we have a gospel reading where Jesus is 12. And I'm sure the, you never did this, but he gives his parents perhaps a small amount of sass. That, sure, that never, yeah, no, hmm. absolutely not, right? Doesn't happen over here either. Sure, not over here. And you know, I mentioned this, I mentioned this a few weeks ago when I was talking about Jesus' dad, his earthly dad, Joseph. Because Jesus sort of gives his parents the home alone treatment. And instead of his parents, well, his, his parents kind of forget him. It's, it, this, maybe this is where they rip the, the, the plot line from Home Alone, you know? They travel a day's journey. They turn around. No Jesus. They thought he was with some friends or some relatives. But he was staying at the temple. And he wasn't just hanging out. So now, if you hung out in the church for three days... What would you do? Sleep. 
sleep. You sleep. Okay. I I just save up my money and eventually buy a TV for entertainment. Okay. You you just hang out. How about you down at the end there? What would you do if you're hanging out in the church for just three days? Probably sleep just to sleep the entire time. That's a lot of sleeping. If you sleep for three days, maybe you go to the doctor, huh? I would, I would, you would play, okay. I would eat and play and do everything like on a normal day. Okay. But not talk about this because Well, I want you to think about this story where Jesus stays behind. Because he stays behind not to sleep. I'm sure he slept some. I'm sure that someone fed him. But he stays behind to talk with the teachers, the rabbis. And they were astonished at the great questions he asked and his understanding of the scriptures. They were so impressed with him. And then when Mary and Joseph find Jesus finally, he, that's when he gives them a little bit of sass, where he says, well, didn't you know I was in my father's house? So if you were away for three days and your parents found you, do you think it would make them happy? To say, well, why didn't you know I was here? Duh, right? No, you know, no, okay. Well, I gave you this blank piece of paper for you to imagine what it would be like if you were somehow away from your parents and not scared, so you're safe. So you're not scared, because I know that could be a scary thing but away from your parents for three days. So I want you to use this paper to draw a picture of what's going to happen. Okay? Or make one. Or make one and you folded it into that animal you make. Okay. All right, so it, it, it can be anything you want. I've got some more paper here. So I want you to think about that. And what would you, what would you do if you were away from your parents for three days? Just like Jesus was in the temple. All right. And you got, I got more paper here. I'll leave it up front here in case you need extra paper to tell the story, all right? Let's pray. You can all repeat after me. Oscar, can you make praying hands right now? Thank you. Dear God, thank you for being part of our story. Help us to look for your love in our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up here. Merry Christmas again. Have fun drawing your stories. How many of you, Christmas Day, time around Christmas, family time, find yourself watching a lot of movies? Anyone? Okay. A few people. I think at least half. Maybe it's after a great feast, you're kind of full with um, caloric yuletide cheer, maybe, and you're just kind of letting it wash over you. Hopefully you're getting a time to rest. And yeah, having a movie on, it's not always a bad thing. So I have kids, obviously, so the, the past couple days, we've seen a lot of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Encanto, that new Disney movie on Disney Plus. That I think it's been on at least twice. So how about you? Christmas, Christmas movies, movies over Christmas. What, what do you watch? Hallmark, Hallmark Channel. No. Elf. It's a, life. it's a Wonderful Life. Die Hard. Die Hard. I was waiting for someone to say Die Hard. <laughs> I've never actually seen Die Hard. Sorry. Grinch, yep, we, 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 like, we like Grinch. Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. And a big one in our house is the... Well, yeah. Home Alone, yep, there it is. The Christmas Chronicles. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think those are going on, aren't they? Are we up to like three or four now? They're Chronicles, you know, so got to keep going. Muppet's Christmas Carol is a big one in our house, too. That's a great one. Miracle on 34th Street. Miracle on 34th Street. 
How about books, too? Is there any particular story, um, piece of literature? The Night Before Christmas. Yeah, that's a great one. So this time of year, we get wrapped up in a lot of stories. Um, maybe it's just, you know, the sort of break that some of us get around Christmas, especially Christmas Day, the days afterwards. We might find ourselves with a bit more time to be on the couch, a bit more time to be at home. Maybe not. That's not everybody's schedule. You know, some of us are working, some of us have to be on shift, some of us unfortunately don't get much of a break at all. But as we have this time to rest, we get immersed in stories, stories that are familiar to us, that we know well, maybe new ones that we discover as we channel surf or scroll through Netflix or the other dozen streaming apps that exist now. And I must admit that I love a great movie, a great show, a great book. But oftentimes then it feels like we sort of inadvertently rush past the actual story of Christmas. And the assigned readings for this Sunday seem to kind of do that too. All of a sudden, we get the one story from Jesus when he's a kid. In the Gospel of Luke, when he's 12. No more little baby. We didn't, we're not going to get to the, uh, the, the wise men until Epiphany. And we kind of rush past it. Rush past the nativity. Rush past the story that gathers us as people of faith on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day, in this season. So what do we do with it? What do, we do, what do we do with these readings this morning? We have Samuel in the temple. I think the connection there is that we have a boy who didn't yet know exactly what he was called to. Samuel was growing in understanding, was growing into the leader that God would make him to be. And in our gospel reading, we have Jesus growing into who he is. Fully human, in the case of Christ, means fully limited. That God would choose to be limited in flesh. And so, when Jesus prays, you know, in the garden later during Holy Week, when Jesus feels anguish and sorrow, I don't think it's a show for the people. I think it's that God actually takes on our flesh, our human experience of not knowing, of being confused, of being in pain. And so Jesus, too, has to grow, has to grow into his purpose and what he was born to do. In Psalm 148, this wonderful song of praise, angels sing from the highest heavens about the wonder of God's creation. And I think about that Christmas night and the wonder that the shepherds experienced and the wonder that Mary and Joseph, as they were visited, experienced. And then I think about us. Because I think wonder is a big part of keeping the Christmas story fresh in our hearts and our heads as a prayer and meditation to wonder. Think of Mary. Mary knew she had been chosen. 
that Jesus was destined for something holy, a gift from God. But still, when she met things that happened to her, whether it was the strange visitors from the field or this frustrating and anxiety-producing thing of losing Jesus, this promised child, in Jerusalem somewhere, like, just pause for a minute. Think about Mary's heart in that moment. Think about your own heart if you, if you lost a kid somewhere in a city that you don't live in and you were a day's walk away from it. And upon finding Jesus and being probably stressed and anxious and a whole bunch of other emotions, she still then wonders and ponders and treasures this instance, this story, this moment in her heart. To wonder, I think, is to understand that we don't always know. But wonder, I think, is different than just pure terror or pure angst of the uncertain. I think wonder is a different position. Because to look at something in wonder, I think, is a faithful act. To wonder means to understand that God is up to something. And you might not know what it is. And you might have mixed feelings about it. But to wonder is to treasure in your heart. To ponder it. And to trust that God meets you into that. Our Colossians reading. Did we read anyone's wedding text there? I, I've done Colossians, that reading especially, at a lot of weddings. I love it. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, patience. Words that will sustain a relationship, be it to a spouse or not. Words that we're called to ponder in our hearts. In this Christmas season, and in every season, how are we clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, and patience as we go out into the world and meet people, people we know well, strangers to us, but all beloved children of God? And then we think about the Christ child. Because what was Jesus clothed with? Both in the manger. Not great garments of a king, but some kind of swaddling clothes. We don't know that it was rags, per se. Probably something hopefully comfortable for an infant to keep an infant warm. But certainly not the robes of kings. And then as Jesus grew and came into his earthly ministry, he didn't walk around making a show of how shiny he was, of how wealthy he was, certainly not. He wasn't clothed with power and earthly strength, but something different that caused people to wonder, to follow him, to seek him out and say, what is, what is he doing? And we too, as people of faith, are called to put on those same things as we move through this world. Compassion. Kindness. Humility. And patience. And finally, we're called to sing, then, of that love that finds us. Of that love that covers us when we 
maybe are a little bit short of patience and compassion and humility and kindness. And calls us again into right relationship with each other and with God. So it's still Christmas. Yes, I know it's December 26th. And we'll see the stores move on quite quickly, do their full pivot to clearance racks of Christmas things, and here's the Valentine's Day stuff. I saw it staged um, this week even, like as I walked into a store. They had like a little kind of like wall, and like behind it was just hearts, just hearts everywhere. We're called to keep Christmas. To keep it. And to look with wonder on God's world. Hopeful uncertainty about where God is calling us next. About how God's peace that we so desperately need will find us in the midst of things that are not peaceful. And I think again about Poor Mary and Joseph, as they lost Jesus somewhere in Jerusalem on a big festival day. As I mentioned to the kids, as I read this story, maybe it was all the holiday movies, I'm not sure that Home Alone didn't just rip off the Bible. I'm not sure if anyone's had that hot take before. Probably not. But there are Mary and Joseph this child that was promised, this child that angels foretold, they lost him. Talk about pressure, right? Jesus gives his parents a slip, and then when they find him, again, I don't think that Jesus makes them feel any better. Oh, didn't you know I must be in my father's house? How does Joseph feel about that statement? On some level, I think Joseph also knows, knows quite well that Jesus is something bigger. But I think it caused Mary and Joseph and all the teachers that Jesus had counted in the temples to wonder, to ponder these things in their heart. And so, as you move into Christmas, the, the days that are left of it, um, we have 12 of them, in case you're wondering that that song's about. It's not the days coming up to Christmas. It's the days that follow afterwards, that season before Epiphany. I wonder where you will wonder at how you will find Christ meeting you in your lives. Maybe you feel like Mary and Joseph, a bit panicked, a bit lost, a bit anxious, unsure of what to do. But know that God meets you in that. Treasure that good news in your heart and share it. Share it in word and deed with those around you. So in a pr- way to practice sharing it, um, I want you to find someone you feel at least close enough to, to, to talk to for two minutes and just tell them what makes you wonder about what God is going to do next in this season. Where do you look at the world and go, hmm. And let, let that short conversation be your prayer today. Does that make sense? I know I'm, I'm throwing a curveball at you. Um, and so introverts, if you want to ponder these things in your heart, know that that's okay. Don't make the introverts talk when they don't want to. Okay? Everyone got that? Give me a thumbs up. We've got to protect our introverts, okay? 
But um, in so much as you feel comfortable, take a couple minutes. Use your words. You can make noise. It's fine. What makes you wonder in this season about what God is doing next? Go. Go. So as you wonder, it's always, it's always hard to invite you to start talking, you know. If you pick it up in, during the past in the piece, too. Um, as you wonder, as you wonder aloud, as you wonder in the silence of your own heart, um, receive this blessing. May the God who made you fill you with wonder. In this season, in all the days of your life. In the name of Christ. Amen. We'll know that uh, this week uh, a lot of the office activities here at Vista are closed, but we still are the church together. Um, a couple announcements just briefly. Um, you'll note that uh, if you are new here and we don't have your contact information, we do have these uh, contact cards. If you would leave them in the offering plate uh, with your contact information, or sometimes if there's an update and you just thought about it right now and you wanted to fill it out, that works for that too. So we'd love to get it um, a Get in contact with you. Again, this will be kind of a quiet week this week at Vista. Um, we have moved a lot of our uh, small group activities to digital for the time being. You'll note that, and most of those this week are canceled, no confirmation. 
Um, no Living Faith, no, uh, no Monday Morning Bible Study. Um, so we'll pick that up after the Christmas holiday. We again thank you for all your generosity this year and uh, encourage you, if, if you are able, to, to leave your offering in the plate at the back of there. But just know that you, you are an offering. And so um, you'll note that we're not singing our typical offering thing. But we're singing a verse of a Christmas hymn that says, What can I give him, poor as I am? Well, the answer is, we give our hearts. We give all that we are to God. And we give thanks for all that God has given to us. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing that. And the peace of Christ be with you always. <laughs> Sorry, I skipped right past it, blew right past it. You may share that peace in a way that feels comfortable. I apologize. Now that you're standing. God's peace, musician. God's peace. God meets you with extraordinary grace in these ordinary things. If you are watching from home, know that you may stop this service at any point or run to the kitchen right now, get some, some bread, some juice, and know that you are welcome at the table. All are welcome at the table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. So gathered together as God's people, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace today and forevermore. Amen. Watch 
sing our silent hearts by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we close with a few verses of O Come All Ye Faithful. Now go in peace, rejoice in Christ our Savior, share great joy, be people of good news. We will. Thanks be to God.